Hello, and welcome to Creative Cow. Today, I get to speak with Boris Yomnitsky of Boris Effects. Hello, Boris. It is great to meet you, and welcome to Creative Cow. Hello, Brie. Very nice to, to meet you. Now, Boris has allowed Creative Cow to use the Crumple Pop plugin to play around, use AI to reduce unwanted background noise, to remove pops, to remove auto sounds in the background, uh, and level out noise. Boris, would you like to introduce Crumble Pop from your point of view? Sure, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, yes, Boris FX have acquired assets of uh, Crumble Pop uh, just a few weeks ago, maybe more like a month ago, uh, with the idea of creating a AI-based audio solution for specifically for video editors. And I'm talking audio restoration here. Uh, where many people, many, many of Boris Effects customers who use our visual effects and compositing products, uh, they always face, oftentimes face the issue of uh, not so great sounding audio because of mostly recording problems. Sometimes you have to record outside, you have to record in a big room with a lot of echo. Sometimes the microphone is too close to your mouth or hidden in your, in your shore. And that creates all kinds of distracting audio uh, imperfections that you know, obviously everyone has to deal with. And some of our customers have uh, big audio departments with audio engineers sitting in the back room somewhere with you know, multi hundred thousand dollar equipment uh, to the aid and with you know, ages of expertise and education in audio engineering. And they can deal with some of these problems. But Many of our customers are actually you know, uh, just uh, one, one guy or small team operations where they have to fix the interview or they have to fix the YouTube video or, or sometimes even the broadcast uh, if it's shot outside with traffic noise, with uh, weather, with wind. Uh, it's all pretty distracting. So uh, Crumple Pop come to the rescue here because Crumple Pop software is pretty unique in that it's using AI technology, uh, AI models to deal with uh, those imperfections. And AI is very uniquely suitable for dealing with such things because sometimes it's very hard as we all know to tell what is noise and what is useful uh, sound signal. And traditional DSP, digital signal processing uh, methods and uh, tools, uh, they, they help in that respect. And this is where you know, very educated and sophisticated audio engineers can deal with that and can sometimes come up with decent results. But AI does it kind of automatically, you know, just a one button push. Uh, there aren't that many controls that you need to worry about. Uh, it just, you know, you apply an audio effect in Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve currently, and the noise is gone. That, you know, that traffic noise in your background is gone, and the voice is loud and clear. I quality video to your existing Dante audio network. I quality video to your existing Dante audio network. So that's the specific person, uh, purpose of this, uh, of this product family. And what excites me the most, of course, is that evidence of the success of the AI technology being applied here. And Boris FX has about, at this point, about six years of uh, working with AI. Um, and uh, we have an internal AI project, which by the way, just, a few weeks ago, we have shipped the first AI-based features in the first product that uh, where we implemented that, that's Boris Fax Silhouette. And this is where we uh, deal with the traditional compositing process where you, you know, degrain your plate, you do, you do your compositing, then you regrain it. So that degraining or denoising step and that uh, process uh, is actually done with AI model that we trained. And I said it's about six years, and that's about right, because our initial attempts 
were all um, hindered by the nature of the AI. AI is a very complicated technology. The biggest problem, and there are two big problems in AI. Uh, the first problem is the the size of uh, AI software. It's huge. It's you know multi multi gigabytes of uh, installation and lots of libraries that you need to put put on your download and correctly install in your machine. So that's one issue. And we are typically lightweight products. We are plugins. So uh, thousands of customers download this from our website and very large installation sizes are a problem. Second problem is performance. Uh, AI yeah, tends to be slow, especially on the computers that do not have a ton of GPU power. Yeah, there's a latency going on. Yes, absolutely. So you may see a great clean picture uh, as a result, but if it takes you, you know, a minute a frame or, you know, more, it, it's, it becomes not practical. So these were the problems that all AI developers were facing, you know, a few years ago. And now, only now we have, we were able to reduce the, the size of our software and dramatically in, increase the speed. So it becomes practical. It becomes, I don't know, 10 frames a second, 15 frames a second on, on good hardware for processing. Uh -huh. And that becomes more practical. So we're approaching real time and image processing. But what's, again, what's super exciting to me is that in audio AI, in audio application of the AI, that it's, it's, it runs real time. Really? Yeah, um, mostly because audio tends to be smaller than video. Uh, even even high definition audio uh, still a lot smaller than let's say you know four K. So this can be used in broadcast or live stream. Yeah, absolutely, can use be used in broadcast. As a matter of fact, what impressed me most when I started to look at Crumple Pop is that you just apply the filter uh, in let's say your Adobe Premiere timeline to your soundtrack, and it just plays back in real time, and the noise is gone. There's no rendering. True. True. It's instant. And you do not need to go to a specialized door application uh, to, to do that. Or even, you know, uh, you don't need to go to the cloud. You don't need to ship all your media to some cloud server and uh, do your restoration in the cloud and then, have, and then pull it back uh, to, your, to your local machine. So that simplicity of operation is just a plugin. And keep in mind that Boris FX traditionally is a plugin company, fundamentally. Yes. That's what we're most known for is the simple plugins. So the fact that this amazing result can be achieved as a plugin, as an audio plugin in uh, NLE timeline is, is, is pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. Now, with regards to Crumple Pop, is the AI kind of erasing everything and just recreating the voices on top no, oh, not, not at all. It's actually, it's, it's, it's actually a lot more interesting. Uh, yeah, uh, what it does is um, the, the model, we call it a model, it's basically a piece of software, right? The model is trained on uh, what's called a training set. And a training set consists of samples of uh, clean audio versus the same sample of uh, original audio with, with the noise. So with noise, without noise, with noise, without noise. And we're talking about thousands of samples. And someone who is human, obviously, would have to create those, uh, those samples. You have to record them. You have to clean them up. You have to uh, listen to this. You see, a lot of this process is about listening. Or in, in case of visual effects, uh, AI for visual effects is looking. So this is where the human part comes in. Uh, the programmer will orchestrate this complex piece of software that deals with it, but it's the human who is basically creating and training that model. So that's how, th that's how this works. And a lot of the unique, um, well, basically unique technology is in uh, that training process. So the way it works is uh, in the end, when you, it's called inference. Uh, so when you, uh, create when you clean your audio, uh, basically what happens is you pull in some audio samples into that piece of software, the model, and then 
completely new samples or audio comes out of it on the other end, which is sort of, which never, never existed before. The model created that uh, out of the input that was, uh, that was, uh, uh, that was input uh, in, into, into, into the model. So uh, basically the model creates what was, what never existed before. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's basing everything on patterns. Then it picks up the patterns in previous samples, and then you introduce a new clip and it outputs what it believes that audio should sound like based on the patterns. Right. Right. Exactly. Yes. So it pretty would, amazing. Yeah, no, it is very amazing. Yeah. It's not that it actually just deletes certain you know uh, signals or certain samples or uh, not at all it basically creates a brand new uh piece of media okay which just does not have that specific uh noise characteristic it seems like magic to us no it is but on the other hand it can also be perceived as sort of a boogeyman <laughs> wouldn't you say yeah yeah there's been a lot of talk uh, especially in the past couple of months since uh, ChatGPT came out and then stability AI, uh, generative AI became uh, available. And yeah, well, definitely uh, this proliferation of uh, machine learning in our lives in general, and especially in the media and entertainment industry that, where we all work, uh, is very dramatic. It's, it, it's a seismic shift, essentially. Uh, it's a... It's a disruptive technology, which you know obviously will create you know winners and losers as as, as always. I usually I always compare this with let's say uh, digital video and digital broadcast of the past, or um, you know creating uh, uh, developing new uh, non-linear video editing as opposed to linear systems, analog systems, which have, you know, tape-based, right? All these uh, big shifts in the technology uh, redefined our industry. And I've been part of that in the mid-90s. I was at a very, very early NLE development and uh, visual effects for NLEs, the Media 100, the Avid, uh, Division, some other systems of the time. So I have experienced that uh, transformation m m many years ago, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Uh, and I can sense this now that uh, machine learning is definitely going to create big changes in our space. But uh, from my point of view, the changes are good. We'll create more media, we'll create, uh, we'll create it faster. There's definitely a growth in consumption of media of um, media assets in the world, worldwide. We all watch more content and the demand for new content is growing. So how do we meet this demand? Definitely AI is gonna help us there. Absolutely. Yeah, just even the fact that you can throw in a plugin and AI can clean up your audio or AI, AI can clean up your video or uh, you know, very quickly enable you to achieve the results that you're looking for with your project, uh, that's a big game changer. It's reducing costs, it's uh, reducing the time to delivery. It's all, it's all positive. Yes. Do you see any negatives, any fears that you have? You know, I, I personally really don't because I obviously, you know, we all read and hear about concerns about, you know, creativity, concerns about, you know, basically, I, I, what I think is, in the end, uh, there is this person or human that is in control of, uh, of, the, of the project. So uh, AI can provide different choices. Let's say generative AI can provide different options, different choices, uh, but then a person would uh, definitely uh, look at the results and make a choice, choose yeah. the result that that person, the editor or uh, director or producer is looking for. And that choice would be what, you know, what people, what customers or viewers would be 
uh, presented with. So you're not worried about the machines rising up? No, no, <laughs> not, not at all. I, I'll, I'll give you that example. Uh, you know, we as humans, now just think about it. We as humans, we are, when we, let's say we listen to music or we look at, uh, you know, paintings. So we look at, we read, uh, we read uh, novels, right? Uh, we always identify, try to identify with uh, the create someone who created that, and that would, um, you know, makes us happy. This is what makes us interested in listening to music or you know, looking at or, or, or at paintings, and uh, we try to put ourselves in place. Like, what if I created that music, or what if I made that painting or what if i created that uh, movie right you, you kind of like you get into someone's mouth i don't think i'm interested in thinking that uh, what if uh, what if i that machine that wrote that music See, i don't <laughs> identify with machines so um, i really think that uh, it's the human in the end that would be uh, you know that would be interesting Boris, thank you so much for meeting with us here on Creative Cow. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet you and to speak with you about Crumple Pop and AI. My pleasure. It was, was a pleasure to, to, to talk to you. Thank you.